Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco F3, the Mi 11X and the Redmi K40. Today we are talking about yet another ROM which is making its transition to Android 12. We are talking about Veeb Project Beta, official based on Android 12. Now before we get into the details, if you like custom ROM stuff and if you own any of these devices and even if you don't, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really really motivates us and we are putting out two to three videos out there every single day for you to enjoy and if you think you want to chat with like-minded people who have similar devices and discuss custom rom stuff you can join us on telegram because there we have more than a thousand like-minded people doing this every single day and last but not the least if you really think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and enjoy exclusive perks exclusive content and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is Kalash let's get going all right so the beautiful Mi 11x this used to be my primary device and then I moved to well this the iPhone 12 but I still have a lot of respect for this phone because for the money, the amount of hardware the Mi 11X comes with is really, really amazing. So we have V Project 1.0.3 Beta Official Android 12 updated on the 27th of October 2021. So the changelog says initial release and this is the full changelog over here. There are a lot of changes. You can go ahead and pause the video and look at the change log. These are the credits. So big thanks to these guys like Seba Ubuntu, Framework underscore res, Nick V. Bokhurst for Kernel, Drive Through McDonald, and Besok. I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of your names wrong. I'm really, really sorry. But that's what this particular ROM is about. And I, in my last video, I came to know that this is for anime lovers and this is these pictures and these things are based in japan and stuff like that so anyways i might still be wrong let's talk about the rom let's talk about things which i know about and that is what we are going to do so we have this wonderful wonderful rom based on android 12 with monet ui doing all its magic material you looking great running smooth and i'll tell you this Android 12 ROMs across the board for all these three devices are doing a brilliant job. The developers are killing it because these ROMs are going out of hand. They are working really well and there will be a point wherein very few people will even use MIUI. Heck, even I feel that uh, when MIUI stable, MIUI Android 12 stable comes out, those ROMs will perform great. So let's look at this particular ROM. The moment you boot into this particular ROM, you do see that you have a very, very clean UI. No Google search bar over here. This ROM does come with the Google Camera Go application, which is always a good thing because remember the very basic Google camera app or the camera app that comes in other custom ROMs doesn't really give you that much clarity. At least Google Camera Go does a job better. It has portrait mode and it has a few additional features. So you do see this privacy icon or privacy dot over here which tells you that your camera is being accessed and then it goes away which is really really neat to the left you don't see google feed because when we talk about the launcher you have the quick step launcher and as of now in the android 12 version this particular launcher does not have a lot of customization so we are missing out on google feed but that's okay because the rom makes up for it because of the smoothness that it offers now the moment you go to the app drawer you will notice the first thing you will notice is that monet ui is working like a boss and the rom is doing a great job because the smoothness this elastic pull animation of the status bar is really really amazing so and the best part is this ROM doesn't boot with a lot of, you know, bloatware. It has very, very few applications. So that will give you an even better experience. Now at the top, you do have your quick tiles, which gives you access to the power menu. Then you have the edit option and then you have your settings shortcut over here. You do have a ton of quick tiles over here. As you can see, you have your privacy quick tiles of camera, mic and location access. You can enable or disable that. And then you have the refresh rate quick tile as well. So if you go ahead and enable that, you can actually decide what refresh rate you want to keep this phone at. Now, if you talk about screen recording, it does have internal and external audio. So let's go ahead and enable the screen recording here real quick. There you go. You have this mic privacy icon over here. As you can see, the screen recording is on, but everything is working fluid, super smooth. 
no jitters, no stutters, and the animations are really great as well. So just have a look at the app icon animations. They are really smooth, right? So let's go ahead and stop the recording here real quick. Okay, processing screen recording. There you have it. Here, as you can see, the screen recording is on, but everything is working fluid. Right, so it did record the screen perfectly fine. Let's have a look at it once again. Super smooth, no jitters, no stutter. Yes, it recorded the screen well and it recorded the audio well. So no problems there. If you talk about the multitasking menu, you don't have the select option present. You just have the screenshot option over here, as you can see, right? I would like to see if we have expanded screenshot. Yes, you do have the option of capture more and you do have this magnifying animation, which is really, really good, right? Now let's go to the multitasking menu again, as you can see. If you press and hold on any of these, no. So you don't have, uh, you know, the split screen option or the floating window option that is missing. I think they will add that later, but I'll tell you this. I mean, just look at this. This is feeling iOS smooth. Trust me, I'm using iPhone with a 60 Hertz display and this is feeling so better. This, this really feels very nice. You should, if you have a Mi 11X with an unlocked bootloader, just to feel this, Smoothness, you should try it for a couple of days. I'm telling you this. I don't want to override things, but smoothness is something that is my weakness. If, if a UI feels really smooth, I really, really start enjoying it. Now, let's move to the settings part before we actually get to the more important stuff like safety net and wideband L1 and things like those. Let's talk about the settings menu because now we are at a stage where what has started happening is Android 12 ROMs have started getting custom ROM customization. So if you go to network and internet, you have very basic stuff over here. Just your usual Android 12 things, 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, you name it, it is working fine. You have Bluetooth working absolutely fine. Wi-Fi calling working absolutely okay. Under apps, you have granular control over default apps, assistant, unused apps, and special app access. You can go ahead and check that. Under notifications, you do have notification history, which you can go ahead and enable. You have conversations, you have bubbles and all the other things which are working absolutely fine. Now, if you go to battery, you do see that you have battery usage, battery saver, adaptive battery and battery percentage. Something that is missing over here is the game dashboard and thermal profiles. So you don't have thermal profiles over here. And as you can see, if you go to battery usage, the battery usage is decent. It's not really out of the world, but it is decent. You can get through maybe more than half the day, almost a day and stuff like that. And even if you look for the game dashboard over here or just search for game, as you can see, this is a feature I think, uh, let me just check. Yeah. So the search in settings probably is not working. I might be wrong there, but if you go to storage, you have the storage manager and the usual things. Under sound, you have the clear speaker option. So no direct sound enhancer over here. And you have the option of live wallpapers. I don't have one installed and you have styles and wallpapers over here in which you can go ahead and change a lot of things. For example, let's go to this and set wallpaper. You will notice Monet UI doing its job and changing things to really, really green. I really like the way Google has selected the accent colors for you know different various UI elements and it, it really feels very subtle to the eye. I really like that. Under security, you have fingerprint. You don't really have face unlock because it is still early days. You have granular control over location, passwords and accounts. And then you have system in which you have gestures. So you have system navigation, you have swipe to screenshot and you have double tap to sleep on the status bar all working like a charm. You have your always on display, which is working absolutely fine. And look at this animation over here. Isn't it beautiful? There you go. Now remember, this is still a beta. I've not had any major issues. You can definitely try it as a daily, but you know, searching in settings not working, the game dashboard not being there and a few things here and there might be a deal breaker for you. It's not for me because I don't really use this phone that heavily. I use it for testing and making videos and sometimes 
playing around with it. So now let's talk about the important stuff. For example, if you talk about safety net over here, it's passing right of the box and DRM info, you do have Widevine L1. So your important stuff is taken care of. And if you actually go to about phone and you click on Android version, this is it your android 12 easter egg works like a charm se linux is enforcing so your security needs are taken care of as well now let's actually go ahead and talk about the benchmark numbers and the first thing that we will look at is the cpu throttle test now the cpu throttle test doesn't really look exciting or very very powerful but remember 188 033 GIPS is what the score is, the average score, and the CPU throttle to 82% of its max performance. So I'm pretty sure these things will improve with time. Even if you go to Geekbench over here, and if you have a look at the Geekbench score, 967 and 2957. So this is very, very close to stock because the multi-core score is around 3200 on Android 12 MI UI and the single core score is just 10 or 20 points more. So all in all, V project looks awesome. Initial Android 12 build doing a great job right out of the way you can use it as a daily driver let me know in the comment section what do you think about this particular rom until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care goodbye